Hey, uh, Mara, good morning. And it's another Thursday morning down in New Zealand in the Welcome Bay area. My name is Jan Flynn, and you're today with me on 30 Minutes with Jan. And we have successfully um, brought South Africa online. So no load shedding this morning in the areas. And this morning, we're talking to Mariska and Tania. Hey, Mara, good morning. Hi, Jan. Hi. Good evening. Feliz, I guess. <laughs> How are you? Uh, very good. We're good. We've had challenges with load shedding, but we're good. <laughs> we, we had a bit of a challenge last time that we tried to get you guys on, and um, it didn't work for us. But uh, I do understand it's probably government trying to stop money flowing out of the country, <laughs> so they're even boycotting <laughs> us. So. Yeah, they knew it was about financial immigration. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite an interesting path that we have look, uh, been together. I mean, myself and Tanya has been uh, roughly about, is it about 10 years now? Goodness me, time flies so quickly. Um, yeah. 10 years, Tanya was always the girl that, that moved the money of my clients that needed to put some money offshore. She was always the girl that helped us there. Um, and then I decided to move myself offshore and Tanya helped me again. So, and then she brought Mariska into the picture. Mariska is more the, the tax expert. Is that right, Mariska? That's correct. Yes. You're the, you're the, 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 the brain with the figures. <laughs> I know the figures. Definitely. Uh, Tanya is Tanya, the brain with, with the, with the dollar signs. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, had a, I had a heap of questions that people sent us through. Um, uh, one of the questions they asked, what is the difference between financial immigration and leaving South Africa? Yes, so, yeah, um, the difference is if you've left South Africa to live abroad and have not notified the Reserve Bank of your departure, you're still classified as a South African resident deemed to be living temporarily abroad. So you are okay. therefore subject to the same tax laws and financial regulations as South African residents living in South Africa. And by financially immigrating, you have solved yourself of these resident obligations. Okay. So you, you are supposed to be paying tax as if you are in South Africa. That's correct. That's the shorter version of that. That's the shorter version of that. <laughs> um, another question I had, what is a blocked account? So a blocked account, when we do the financial immigration application, we always get questions in and around what is a blocked account. And a blocked account is basically a controlled account that is managed through an authorized dealer, which is a bank. So when you complete that EP 356B form for financial immigration, you declare all your assets and liabilities on that form. And then the authorized dealer, the bank, has to control and make sure that the correct deposits that were declared can only go in and out of that account. So you can't have a family deposit money into your blocked account once we started the process for financial immigration. You can, however, do local transfers. So say now I've done my financial immigration and my RA is paid out and I'd like to give a donation, for instance, to a charity or I'd like to send some money to a family member, I can do that on my blocked account but I cannot um, have money deposited into that account just randomly. It looks like we had a slight break up there in, um, in the broadcast from your side, Tani. You were, you were cut off, um, but just a quick cut off, but that, all right, so we, we've got, basically we've got a blocked account. Um, I was asked the question the other day, so once your money has paid out, you, you financially immigrated fully, um, does that mean that you can still use that account that you guys are opening to transfer money into South Africa? Let's say, for instance, I want to give some money to my mother on a monthly basis. How can I do that? So, Jan, what we would normally suggest in that instance when we've done financial immigration, we would actually assist the client to deposit that money directly into their mother's account. So okay. there shouldn't be a blocked account. In some Instances will have clients that will change that blocked account to a non-resident account. So there's a process involved with that. So if they'd like to transfer funds and they plan to buy a house in South Africa, we would change that blocked account to a non-resident account, and then that money flow to the non-resident account. We just change the status of the account. All right. 
Um, Mariska, the, the, as, as you are the tax brain here, tell us a bit more about the proposed bill that was released end of July. Yes, yeah, so the proposed bill, we are all waiting in anticipation to know if it's going to be passed or not. But basically, at the moment, if you do your financial immigration, you can withdraw your retirement annuity. Um, so the only two options you have is obviously withdraw it at 55, which is retirement annuity age, and obviously you leave the country on immigration. So with financial immigration being phased out as of 28 Feb 2021, that's something of the past, you can't remember your RA. So the new proposal would be that if you can prove that you've been a non-resident for three consecutive years, then you can withdraw your RA. So it doesn't have to start from 1 March 2021. You don't have to prove onwards from there that you've been a non-resident. You can, let, like maybe you left 10 years ago or five years ago, you can then still use those years to prove that you've been a non-resident. Okay. The only thing you would have to prove that in your tax returns, um, in your tax returns, you would have had to say that you were a non-resident. So lots of um, people who left South Africa, they don't do that. They don't want to declare their income to South Africa just because they pay the tax. So if they did not do that, SARS will allow us to actually open the tax returns and submit that for, for these people and to just prove that they've been non-resident. So then they can withdraw their RA. But okay. that is still proposed. So we don't know if that's going to be passed. All right. So if, if I've got a pension, will that be by this proposed changes that's coming through? No. So pension funds, provident funds, preservation funds, that's not affected at all. You can withdraw your pension fund at any time, as well as your provident fund. Your preservation fund, you can withdraw once in your lifetime before retirement. It's only retirement annuity that's being affected. Okay. Question that I got was, what was the capital gains tax payable ceasing to be a resident okay so if you cease to be a resident and this can be either via financial immigration or if you've actually made your tax days um your rate for tax residency then you you apply at SARS to be a non-resident so when you cease to be a resident you need to pay exit tax which is capital gains tax and that's on your worldwide assets. So if you have, let's say, shares in South Africa at the time that you cease to be a resident, you will pay capital gains tax. So you don't have to sh sell the shares, you just need to pay the capital gains tax. Um, okay. There are assets that's excluded from that, and that would be if you have a fixed property in South Africa, you don't pay capital gains tax until you actually sell the property. And then also, if you have um, a business in South Africa and you earn maybe 20% share or at least 20% shares in a business, then you won't have to pay capital gains tax on, on that asset and also equity shares with your employer. So those are the three ones that's excluded, but any other assets you will pay capital gains tax on. Okay. I have a question on, on that capital gains tax. So if I move most of my money out of the country and just leave the retirement annuities there, and then a month, year, six months down the line, I do the financial immigration, will I still be liable to pay capital gains tax on the stuff that I've already moved out? Yes, because you cease to be a resident on the date that you actually left South Africa. So this is also another thing that somebody might have actually left 10 years ago and they never told SARS about it. So you still then need to go back and tell SARS that, okay, I left 10 years ago. Then if you have assets and you didn't disclose it, you can do a voluntary disclosure with SARS and they won't penalize you on it, but you then still need to pay the capital gains tax. Okay. Uh, question, will I lose my South African passport if I financially immigrate? Yeah, that question comes up quite often. Um, I get it daily. <laughs> and call today to ask, you know, if I'd lose my passport if I did financial immigration. So no, we are doing the application from a financial perspective. So home affairs is completely separate. You can still come back to South Africa on a holiday. Um, you can still apply. Some countries will require you to have dual citizenship. So you need to apply for a letter to be able to carry two passports. 
but now you will still remain a citizen um, up until the time that you relinquish your South African citizenship. All right. So let, let's say, for instance, I've got a house and let's say a 10% share somewhere in a small business that's not doing very well. What happens if I financially emigrate to these assets in South Africa? Or should I, should I sell my house? I mean, must I sell my house? No, you don't have to sell any of your assets. You can leave your assets in South Africa. Apart from the capital gains tax that you'll pay on exit, there's no uh, no difference. The only problem is that if you do financial immigration, the way that we end your tax at, at financial immigration is that we deregister your tax number from start at the end. But if you still have assets in South Africa, we just can't deregister your tax number. We will apply for you to have a non-resident um, tax status. So you'll still need to declare your your South African source-based income to SARS and, and you need to pay tax in South, in South Africa on that income. So okay. the short answer is you'll remain a South African tax resident, but you'll be a non-tax resident. And that just means that you don't have to declare your worldwide income in South Africa, only your South African source-based income. Okay. So I, I will, I'll be paying, let's say I rent out the house, I'll be paying, I will still be paying tax on that. Um, but I will be a bit more, how can I say, I, can, I will be a bit more biscarent, um from, from my worldwide assets from SARS. Yeah. I mean, that's a big thing. Yeah, so the big thing is that lots of people do financial immigration because they have no, um, they, they, don't, they don't plan to come back to South Africa. And now perhaps they earn more than 1.5 million abroad and they then have to pay to that income in South Africa. So it's that income that's protected um, if you become a non tax resident or if you financially immigrate. What about debt? Can, can I financially immigrate if I've got debt there? Um, yeah, yes, we can assist with an application for um, financial immigration if you do have debt. So, an instance, basically, the asset, let's say the asset value of RA needs to be larger than the same money owed on a credit card. And what would happen is we'd assist with the application, and as soon as the funds from the retirement annuity will pay out, we will then pay that credit card and obviously bring it to a zero balance. We'd be able to assist in that instance, but not in the days of involved because the bond is controlled by um, an authorized dealer and what happens is that bank needs to report on a monthly basis to the reserve bank that that bond is actually being paid. So especially those clients that are renting out their properties and still have a bond and looking to do financial immigration, we cannot assist in those individuals. We can assist with their overdraft or card. Okay. So I've got a question or two coming in from, from viewers. Um, one question coming in from can one change a retirement annuity to a different thing like a provident fund or a pension fund? The answer there is no. So that's a, another question coming in. Will one's primary residence still be excluded from the CGT exit tax? Interesting question there. Very interesting. So it, it depends on. Um, uh, okay, so it's broken down. So until the day that it was your primary residence, you will have that exclusion. But from the day that you leave South Africa and if you then rent it out, it's being proportioned. So it becomes a trade since the day that you start renting it out. So you'll still have a little bit of that primary residence available. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but this is quite a question. Um, I get this often. Uh, Basically, the question is, are we allowed to financially immigrate before we have a residence in New Zealand? I'm on a worker's visa. Can I financially immigrate? So, yes, yeah, we can assist with the application for financial immigration. Uh, what we do need in that instance is obviously we need a tax residency certificate um, in order to assist with the application. And what that means is, is it just confirms that you're um, paying tax in New Zealand. So it's not a residency certificate because there's always confusion when the word comes up tax resident certificate. So it's actually just to confirm that you're a tax resident in New Zealand. So that's okay. the certificate that you require. So yes, we can assist in that instance. And I, I do understand that the main concern for a lot of people is 
they are here on workers visas and what happens if something like COVID struck again and they need to get back home let's say they've, they've done their financial immigration i'm on a workers visa i've done my financial immigration everything has gone through easily no problems now suddenly i lose my job while on a workers visa here and i get sent back home what now so what we do in that instance um, we call it a failed immigration if they come back under a period of five years so okay. we do an application Reserve Bank and change that block brand account status to a South African resident and then um, once we get approval from the Reserve Bank that account can be effective as normal. So we would then just do an application to the Reserve Bank to say that it was a failed immigration if it's below a period of five years. Okay and then how long will this take to do? So the application generally takes between four to six weeks the clients would contact us prior um, to coming back to South Africa so we can submit the application. Okay. So there, there's no reason that somebody cannot financially immigrate and there's no reason that you cannot go back once you have financially immigrated. Correct. I actually had a call today from a client and I'm sure she's watching. Um, she She's still in two minds to, to what? She's not she's still in two minds if she's going to stay in New Zealand permanently or she's going to come back to South Africa. Okay. And that is entirely your decision. I mean, it is as simple as doing an application to the Reserve Bank. Um, so you can come back to South Africa if you've done financial immigration. It doesn't stop you. I think just from a tax perspective, they would need to change the status as well. Yes, yeah, so you can apply to have your tax number reinstated. Um, it's, it's, not, uh, it's not undoable. You can't do it. Okay. But I would meant for somebody to do financial immigration if they are unsure if they are coming back it's it shouldn't you shouldn't do it just for that for if you are on a you shouldn't do it okay interesting question from natasha are there any penalties for a failed immigration so to be honest natasha i haven't really had any that have come back um nobody wants they, to yes nobody wants to look you do pay a fee to the Reserve Bank for the application. Um, sometimes, also dependent on the time frames, there were in the past where they would penalise you on your RA to bring back some of that funds. Um, but we haven't had any instances like that for a very long time. Okay. Interesting question as well. Can I financially immigrate if I work remotely for an overseas company and still stay in South Africa? So South Africa will be the main domicile. No, no, you, you can't do that. So if, you, if you're not well leaked, you can't financially immigrate. So, yes, uh, unfortunately. I also had a question today about a client um, who she's the wife. She's currently living in New Zealand and the husband's still stuck here in South Africa. They're still busy with the visa applications. And yeah. a question came to ask can they do financial immigration as a family unit? Um, no, we cannot if the husband is still in South Africa because, as mentioned, Obviously, uh, we need that tax residency certificate if they're looking to encash the RA. Um, no, we cannot in that instance. We can do the application for the wife in the interim because she is living overseas and she is a tax resident already. Okay. So just, just still on that topic, is there, is there a set amount of months that I have to be out of South Africa before I can apply? No, not at all, Jan. Um, they basically just need that certificate, obviously, just to confirm that they're a tax resident. So generally, most of the employers have already registered their employees for tax. And as soon as they have that, we provide the link where they apply for their tax residency certificate. And as far as I believe, they get the certificate within 10 working days. Okay. So it's quite, quite a quick process. I must say they have it organized there. Yeah. <laughs> they're not sure they can tax money, but uh, at least they do something good with it. Good question. What happens regarding CGT exit tax if, a f if the immigration was failed? Well, so what happens if you become a resident again, then you sell your asset at the date that it, it, it's deemed to be a sale on the date that you become a resident and you buy it back the same date um, the next day. So you, it, it, you don't repay the tax. You've already unfortunately paid capital gains tax. So it becomes your South African asset again um, when you become a resident. Okay. What is other question? Sorry. Sorry for chipping in there. So, <laughs> one of the other questions we had um, 
can I still keep a business in South Africa for financially immigrate? The probably answer is yes. Yes, you can. So the only thing is that you need to declare it and you have okay. to be compliant on that company because SARS won't allow you to em financially emigrate if you, or they won't give you a tax clearance certificate if you are not compliant in your business. All right. Um, can I have a debit order on my blocked RAND account? Yes, so you can have a, a debit order on your blocked RAND account. Um, sometimes clients still have properties here and need to have insurance paid on a monthly basis. Okay. So a debit order can be set up for a client on a blocked RAND account. I think there's always a lot of panic in and around when clients here, they have to close all their bank accounts in South Africa. And it's just because it becomes a controlled account. So yeah. they'll have um, the debit orders going off on the block brand account, it's just more a controlled and managed account than your normal okay. transaction brand account. I've got a question here directly for Mariska asking, what happens if I don't financially immigrate from South Africa? And okay, so if you don't financially immigrate and you've left the country. That's right. Yeah. I'm in New Zealand um, now and I say, oh, I don't, I don't earn $150,000. I don't need to financially immigrate. What can happen to me? Okay, so then you are still seen as a South African tax resident and you will have to declare that income in South Africa. And if you don't, um, the, uh, I don't know what you call it actually, um, I think it's CR or something, but the CRS. Yeah, so all the countries, they report to each other now and you actually have to declare your tax number. So New Zealand could declare that income to South Africa and you, that you could be penalized for that. But if you do not financial immigration, that doesn't mean that you cannot become non-resident taxpayer. So you'll have to break your tax residency status. And um, we've got two tests in South Africa. The one is the ordinary test, um, to, like that's where you would return to after your wanderings. And also you could break your, ta your, your tax day. So if I leave today, then I need to stay out of South Africa for 330 full days. Then on that 330th day, I would um, qualify to be a non-resident. And I cease to be a resident on the date that I left. So that's also a good thing. And, and I would usually, um, say for somebody to do this if they don't have any assets they don't have an ra don't, they don't want to encash anything then just break your tax residency apply at SARS for your non-residency de-register your tax number if you know you're not coming back but definitely close your affairs in south africa okay Another yeah, question. I, sorry just mention something there and um, because this also comes up quite often do i need to submit a tax return if i don't live in south okay. africa that's a good, good one. Then, yeah. So, so, yes. so what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes, definitely yes. And you have to declare all your income in South Africa because you're a South African tax resident and we need to pay tax on our worldwide income. And you do pay tax in New Zealand as well. And we've got a double tax agreement with New Zealand. So that means that any tax that you would pay on that income in New Zealand you get it as a tax credit in South Africa. So it's not even to say that you are going to pay tax here. You might be completely tax, uh, or it, it might turn into a zero tax payable in South Africa. So rather declare your tax, get your tax credits and stay compliant. I'll, I'll ask the question that, that every, that's on, on the mind of every South African. How will <laughs> SARS know what I earn in New Zealand? <laughs> Yeah, so that's a good question, and that's what they've implemented now with all the countries needing to inform the other countries of of what you earn in another country. Um, so they are they've got their measures in place. Okay, okay. Question from Natasha Amson again: If one is married in community of property in South Africa, can the individual RA of either spouse be processed, or if one or the other is in New Zealand? and the one is still in SA, does the status of marriage make a difference? No, no, they don't look at that at all. They look at where you're residing. If, if, if I'm out of my spouse, I can't financially immigrate while she cannot. 
So you broke up the line. Okay, sorry. If if I am in New Zealand living here, but my spouse is in South Africa, I can financially immigrate, but my spouse cannot. And she will have to do it once she's only here. And that'll yes. be two different um, applications at the end of the day then. Two separate applications, yeah. All right. Question here coming. It's a bit of a long one. Um, morning, Jan and team. What can we do if we have an error on the IRP5 from the government pension fund and they are not replying to mails? What options do we have to remedy the situation? This is stalling our financial immigration process. Thank you. Okay, so you can contact us. We can assist you with that. You can just give us authority and we can deal with that. We, we have contact with the funds regularly, so perhaps we can assist you with that one. Okay. Other question coming in. If the SA rate for level of income higher than SARS, will the extra tax, basically, if, if there's more tax to be payable, must I pay the tax to South Africa? Yes. So if the, if the rate in South Africa is higher than in New Zealand, then you'll pay tax here. Even if I'm out three years now already? Yes. And they, unless you can, if you have three years, then you can actually apply for your non-residency status. So then it shouldn't affect you, but you just need to apply for that status. Otherwise, SARS still thinks that you are a tax resident. Okay. Quick question back, back to that. Can you guys apply for me just for that um, non-resident status without doing the financial immigration? So can you guys do that? Yes, we can. Okay. I've, I had a question here on how do we contact you if we need help. I will put up all those, um, the needed uh, forms and links up a bit later, just after the after we've done our thing here this morning. Um, uh, two last questions. How long does the financial immigration process take? Look, Jan, I think now with the proposed bill, we've been inundated with applications. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the general process is three months. Um, yeah, Currency Partners is fully equipped and has enough staff. So we we definitely handling all the applications. Um, but the process generally takes up to three months if we don't have any delays from SARS. <laughs> okay. Here's an, here's an interesting question. I have no income in South Africa and did my tax return based on that. Then SARS asked for supporting documents. Okay. <laughs> so, usually when SARS does that, it's because they they have um, they have a source document on their side that proves that the, that you had income. So it's you maybe earned interest in South Africa, or they have something on the system for you, or it's because they want you to provide your your foreign income on your tax return. I can just send them a blank page, basically. <laughs> I guess that would send a message. <laughs> Listen, yeah, it was lovely having you two again on the show this morning. Um, it's really nice. I will post all the, the links up for everybody. Thank you, guys. So, thanks a lot. Um, any last words? Yeah, thank you to you, Jan, for, for including us also on the live presentation. And we hope that we've answered quite a few questions because we've been really inundated with a lot of questions. So we hope that we've helped a lot of clients that need some guidance. And we're happy to help. You know, I'm just a phone call away to be able to assist if anybody needs um, any help or has any questions. We're happy to help you guys. Yeah, thanks very much. From you, Mariska. Yes, just thank you. And definitely do contact us. We would, we would love to help you guys to finalize your tax figures. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. I'm just going to pop you out, say goodbye to the people, and then we'll have a chat afterwards. Okay, great. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. That was Tanya and Scott, both from Currency Partners, uh, doing the financial immigration for us in South Africa. Two wonderful girls. Always um, very informative to have them on the show. Um, within the next 15 minutes, I'll post all the links that you need to get hold of them. And I can say... Uh, Tanya has contacted many of the clients after hours um, just to help them out with questions that there was. And I mean, there's always questions when you're talking about money. It's, it's not a very easy process um, if, if you talk about money, except the emotions that you go through. There's a lot of other questions and, and uh, answers that needs to. And Tanya was always there for all of my clients, even, I mean, talking way after hours. So, guys and girls, that's me, Jan Fulio, another 30 minutes with Jan. 
all the way from welcome, lovely morning in New Zealand. If I was free this morning, um, I would have gone fishing, but sadly, I need to work. So I'll speak to a lot of you later on the phone. So thanks all. Bye-bye.